Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, may God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you now and always. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord of hosts, we give thanks to you for sending us your Son, Christ Jesus. We thank you, O Lord, for opportunities to worship him, to praise his holy name. We pray, O Lord, that each and every day that our knees would fall before you, that our voices would be lift up and lifted up in praise, that in all we say and do, that we would bring honor before you. Lord, lead us now and always by your Holy Spirit, that we may call your Son, Christ Jesus, Savior and Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, as maybe you noticed with the hymns, with the liturgy, we're talking about the name of Jesus. And when you think about Jesus, what image comes to your mind? Which image holds particular meaning to you? Is it the image of Jesus on the cross as your Savior? The image of the crucifix where Christ hangs, derelict and still, but as a sacrifice so you might have life. Or maybe it's a picture of Jesus the Good Shepherd calling the sheep to him with that gentle and serene look upon his face, calling the sheep to jump right into his arms. Maybe it's the image of Jesus sitting down on the stoop, almost has a laugh in his face, on his, on his face, and he calls the children to him. Let the little children come unto me that I may bless them. What image is particularly meaningful for you? Scripture gives us a number of images of Jesus, doesn't it? If we go to John's Gospel, we have at least seven I Am statements throughout that Gospel, which tell us something about Jesus' love and His mercy for each of us. If we go to John's Revelation, the Revelation of Christ by St. John, we see Christ, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the rider on the white horse, is the lamb upon the throne. What image brings meaning to your heart? The reason I ask you that is because it, there are certainly those images of Christ, that message of Christ, which brings you together today, which brings you in the house of the Lord today, which brings you together to praise his name, which brings you comfort and peace in those hours when, when nothing else can. As we come together today, we have that privilege to praise our Lord. But it probably doesn't surprise you to think that not everybody feels that way. When they hear the name of Jesus, not everybody feels that way when they think about the followers of Jesus. There isn't necessarily adoration or praise, hope or comfort or even peace. But when a lot of people think about the name of Jesus, what comes to their mind? When the world thinks about Jesus and his followers, what do they remember and think about? Maybe they think back to late in the 11th century, when Pope Urban II, in the name of Jesus, sent a hundred and hundreds of thousands of men into battle in what he called the Crusades. Maybe they think about how Pope Urban sent those men in the name of Jesus to slaughter those Muslims who had taken the Holy Land, taken Jerusalem, in Jesus' name. Maybe they thought, think about in the Crusades in 1212 when they had what's been called the Children's Crusade. And in Jesus' name, children, the elderly, the poor, the women, were sent into battle with men's armor but little training to be slaughtered in Jesus' name. That doesn't really seem like the way Jesus sent us out into the world. Because when Jesus went to other places besides the children of Israel, he didn't come with the sword, but he came with the gospel. Well, maybe that's a poor example. Maybe we should go forward about 100 years to the 12th century. Now, many of you know these as the Spanish Inquisitions, but truly, they actually started in France. The Inquisitions began there. And the Inquisitions were intended by the church to weed out heretics or, or false teachers. And so they would call people in, in the dead of night, drag them in before a council, before the church leaders. And in the name of Jesus, they would question them. And if they were not faithful to the full teaching of the Roman Catholic Church at the time, they were put to death. Many of them being beheaded, burned at the stake, drowned in the name of Jesus, after all. Perhaps when you think about that, you think, well, those were historical events.
those happened, those were over 400 years ago, 500 years ago, oh, actually 800 years ago. Why, is, why should we worry about that? Because the world's probably forgotten about it after all. Those things done in the name of Jesus. What about today, though? What about those who, in the name of Jesus, bomb abortion clinics? They want to kill off those murderers by murder. Or what about those, na- those in the name of Jesus who picket military funerals, who go to parades and hold up s- signs with hate-filled messages, slurs, and are condoned by the church? For their, and those hate messages are condoned by the church. And what about those in the name of Jesus who have condemned others, ignored others, hurt others, persecuted others? Is it really a historical event? Is it really so surprising to us, any wonder to us, that when the world hears the name of Jesus, that they don't immediately fall to their knees and lift up hands in praise? It shouldn't be. Because, well, it may be, it may be something as we see the love and compassion of Christ, how often have us as his followers shown that same love and compassion? God, when he sent out the disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, did he intend for us in Jesus' name to behave the way we have? When Jesus came into the world, I'd like to take you back to John chapter 3. Many of you know John 3.16 and I imagine many of you also know John 3.17 as well, which follows right after. But just in case, I want to share it with you again. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Jesus was sent to save the world. And when you look at His ministry, when you look at the way that Jesus behaved in the world that we live in, Did he call people out and drag them into the public square? Did he scream slurs at them? Did he make the adulterer confess her crimes in front of everyone? Did he treat those who are outside of the church, I I mean outside of the children of Israel, as if they didn't count, as if they didn't matter? No. When Jesus came into this world, It is true he confronted sin. And I don't want to pretend that he did not. Because he, after all, did confront sin. But he did so with loving kindness and with care. When Jesus confronted sin, he did so compassionately. And when Jesus came into the world, he did not come to condemn it, but to save it. And as Paul reminds us in his writing for today, he was obedient even unto death. Death on the cross. So that we we might have life. When Christ came into the world, he came with love and compassion to bring healing and restoration to the brokenness of his creation. He sends us out to do the same. And it is true. I've shared with you a number of ways that the church, in the name of Jesus, has done things that we shouldn't. But it's also true that the church has done things in the name of Jesus that have been good. How many Christian ministries just here in our Imperial Valley, are set up to care for the poor, the needy, the homeless. How many Christian ministries have been set up to build hospitals and not only build them, but to run them? Remember, it used to be a lot more common, not as much today, but all these hospitals would have Christian names on them. And that was because Christians, following that same teaching of Christ to heal the sick, to give sight to the blind, wanted to share God's love. How many Christian orphanages and adoption agencies have been set up to give homes to the home to children without parents? Well, now those aren't as specific, are they? In 2010, Christians rallied together from around the world to go to Haiti to show the love of Christ to people they'd never met, to help them rebuild not only their homes but their lives, and share that loving gospel of Jesus Christ. In 2011, a Phil- in the Philippines. A typhoon hit in August, which is one of the most severe that they've had in a number of years. Christians picked up their hammers and saws and with the love of Christ went to, that, to, the, to the Filipino people 
to bring them the gospel message to help them rebuild. In this past year, there have been Christians in the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, who even in the midst of the violence and the midst of the rioting, even in the midst of the vitriolic speech being tossed back and forth, they came and they prayed with those who were rioting. They came and they prayed with the law enforcement. They came and brought God's message of peace. In this past year, Christians, missionaries, who have given up their homes, their families, their ease of life, have gone into nations to share the gospel message in the name of Jesus, even to their death, as many are seeing right now in Syria, Libya, Iraq. There's been a lot of good and a lot of evil done in the name of Jesus. But where this speaks to us, because we don't have control of other Christians, we can't change the past, is how do people see us as the followers of Jesus today? How do we live as the followers of Jesus in this world today? Do people see Jesus in you? And I want you to truly think about that. Truly think about whether or not people see Jesus in the way that you live your life, the way that you speak to others, the way that you treat others, both those in the church and those outside the church. Do people see Jesus? Do people know you as one whose heart is humbled by the good news message of salvation, knowing what Jesus has done for you? As one who brings peace, words of comfort and solace, do people see you as a follower of Jesus who has hope, who lives differently, whose life has been changed? Or do people see you as a follower of Jesus who's interested in yourself, whose own comforts come first, whose words tear down instead of build up, whose words are filled with vitriol and slurs, whose life looks the same as any other life. Well, we certainly can't control the way people think, the way that people see the church. We can certainly behave as God intended his church. We can certainly live in the name of Jesus in a way that brings honor to our God, in a way that brings honor to him whether we are right here in church, in our community, at home with our families for the example of our children. And this is important. It has not just consequences for today, but it has eternal consequences. Because on the last day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. But people will see Jesus in two, di two different ways. There will be those on the last day who, as their knees are bowing, as their tongues are confessing, great fear because they don't know him they don't know this lord and master of all there will be those of us who bow who our knees will bow who will fall our knees will shake but not in fear but in amazement and awe that our almighty king has come how have you influenced the lives around you what have you done in jesus name how do people know jesus by your example When we think about it, it has that eternal consequence and it does matter. I pray that by the way you've lived, though, people would see the mercy that you've been shown. People would see the forgiveness that you have been given. People would see the love that our God has poured out in compassion upon you. Because despite who we are as sinners, as those who have our broken as those who have not lived as pure and loving examples of our Savior. We have a loving Savior who set, us, set for us the greatest example of all and gave His very life on the cross. Who even though we did not deserve it, gave His own life for our sufferings and death. In His example, in His name, we have salvation. And Paul starts, out, starts us off with that conditional sentence, doesn't he? If you have the hope, if you have the love of Christ within you, then this is how you will live. I pray that as those who have been redeemed by Christ the crucified, 
That is how you would live. Humbled, but with hope. Loving, showing God's compassion. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that we as your people would faithfully proclaim your name, that we would bring honor to your name, and that we would bring lives, bring, bring honor through the lives we live. Lord, we pray for your forgiveness for those times when we have done things in your name that bring animosity, violence, even hatred. Forgive us for those times when we have not been your witnesses, when we have not lived in the world as, as your children. Reassure us that it is not about what we have done which brings us salvation, but about what you have done for us by your death on the cross. Reassure us each day of our forgiveness. Give us hope in our hearts that we may live lives in your name, in honor to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.